My name is Mike Zuckerman. I'm Chief Marketing Officer for NOAA Software, and we're going to overview the end user experience monitoring market and share industry analyst consensus view for you. User experience management or monitoring is a confused space today. The term is quite overused, and you could compare this to Andy Warhol's 15 minutes of fame, which the space is now going through. Virtually every IT help desk, infrastructure software, and application performance management vendor has attached the term to one or more functions, modules, or software products. It's a mess. So the key to understanding it as we frame industry analyst view is to get a sense of the use cases that you want to support, and then you can pick the tool that's best for you. At closer look, everybody agrees that it's about paying more attention to the user. Historically, 99.9% .9 of the IT data center infrastructure has been focused on networks, storage, processors, and applications, but not so much from the desktop point of view. Now, with user experience monitoring, we're thinking about what's it like for the user at the desktop, and this is empowering us with data to drive use cases and benefits that we've never been able to touch before and to solve problems that have been unsolvable until now. User experience management or monitoring is the domain of big application software. It's about big moving parts, big applications that make your enterprise go. Uh, SAP, Oracle, Microsoft, IBM, call center management, healthcare management systems, Salesforce.com, very big systems that are used by some of the largest companies in the world and that have tens of thousands of users to hundreds of thousands of users. These are the people that drive huge ROI out of these technologies. In terms of the basic functions that you should see in user experience monitoring, and you don't see all of these functions in all of the products, but what you should see are those that you need from this list to drive your use case and your solution set. So first you have to look at where is the measurement coming from, the desktop, the network, the server. Is it actual user data or is it synthesized by some robot or some process running on a laptop somewhere? You want to look at the data that you're getting. Is it just time, length, duration uh, data about transactions? Does it show the user how long they're logged in versus how active they are? And, and most important is what kind of error data are you collecting? 99% of the systems out there just have system error data. Some of them have user error data and actually data errors themselves like master data errors as well as capturing all the user workflow. This is a very, very different scenario. This empowers you to address use cases that could save large firms millions of dollars because of this data collection and dramatically changes the way these user experience monitoring and management products can be used. So beware, all user experience monitoring is absolutely not alike. For granularity, you need to know, are, am I measuring transactions or my custom transactions, pages, buttons, fields, business processes? And if I'm doing that, who's doing the work? Do I have to do it or does it just come out of the box for me? Uh, reporting can vary from proprietary to standard BI right through powerful you know, analytics where you can, you can use graphics to drive your front end and discovery. And of course, notification pager, SMS, and email. These are the basic functionality sets. 99% of the products do not have five or six of the key things I just mentioned on this, on this chart. A good test for your user experience monitoring IQ is to ask three simple questions. And I apologize to the CIOs out there because I know most of you don't know the answers to these questions. What is the average percentage of system error KPI in a stable production environment? What is this average percentage of, of user error KPI in a stable production deployment? And what's the ratio? And the answer is 99% of the time people don't know because they collect system error data, but they don't know anything about user error data. How could you have a fully capable user experience management system if you didn't know how the user was doing? And they're shocked to find that the bulk of the errors in their enterprise before we go in and start to optimize performance are user errors and there's a quantifiable cost to operational bottom line that you can measure with this technology because 
many transactions are not being done correctly or efficiently or effectively. And you can see it based upon the user activity and the workflow. When someone calls the help desk in most organizations today, they have to try to figure out what happened and recreate it. Is it system? Is it user? When you have an advanced user experience monitoring product or technology in-house, you can see all of their workflow and you can see the system errors and the user errors they experienced and you understand everything about it. It's a big sea change. Most of the market is not using these advanced technologies yet and, and they present data that the CIO and the line of business executive has never seen before. Really what we're doing is we're taking the application performance measurement or monitoring market which is really down at the bottom here and we're really raising our perspective up to see everything about the more important side of the equation the human capital the infrastructure has been optimized a lot we're really good at managing our deployments we're good at managing these systems for uh, 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 reliability and redundancy and uptime 24 by 7 and failover. But now it's the people at the top that have to implement the KPI and the divisional plans and, and produce compliant transactions and use best practice that are the greatest opportunity for return on investment. This is where user experience management tools and certain use cases can provide you with the greatest return on investment. And this is the leading edge of the market that can be of greatest benefit to you. If you look at product architecture, not the architecture of the apps we're going to monitor and the people that will use them, but the product, there's really three places that will capture data about the user. Very basic primitive systems capture some HTTP stream or something at a server location and try to quantify the performance of the system that way. Other technologies put a synthetic uh, transaction or robot perhaps on a desktop across a network and try to monitor uh, uh, transactions and capabilities from there. They try to see really if there's a failure or there's a big change in performance and they can notify the IT team. True user experience management happens at the desktop with the desktop agent and you know that's how you know what the real mobile end user or the real desktop end user is doing. It, it works through virtualizations like Citrix, it works online and offline. A lot of Siebel users, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of these users still out there, and, and they do work offline. And it's, it's on-premise today, but it, agent is architected for cloud tomorrow. Because unless you have an agent-based architecture, it's just very hard to implement it correctly or in a useful way. So those are the architectures of the product. In terms of the product implementation model, you've really got to take a close look at what they give you. So claimed capability and delivered capability are 99 miles apart in this market space for user experience monitoring. Most of the vendors give you a tool and say, have at it, go script it yourself, good luck, there are those transactions, go get them. And I can tell you that for big applications like SAP, if you looked at SAP portal and GUI supported apps, uh, if you looked at ERP and financials and HR and SAP CRM and you looked at SAP business objects and you said, I want to know all about those things, right? Um, you're going to be uh, building out scripts for over 100 people years if you ever get it done. And that assumes you, you know those domains, you know what to do. When vendors give you automated framework mapping, all that stuff comes out of the box. It's all done. Even your custom transactions that use SAP standard framework just fall right in. So scripted tools don't do that. Scripted templates that you have to modify don't do that. It's a huge difference. And without that capability, you can never get to probably 10 of the major use cases that will deliver high value. So automation out of the box is super important. 95% of the tools don't do it. Reporting is also super important. Are you using standard BI and navigable analytics, or are you using a proprietary report, or are you just getting an interface where you're told to go figure it out yourself? Again, this dramatically affects your ROI and the time frame in which you can get productive. Applications and architecture supported really are about the major enterprise apps, the big iron, that's impacting your ability to do business. You know, I met the CEO of a $5 billion company and he has 18,000 users on SAP 
And those 18,000 users are the lifeblood of his company's ability to, 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 for that business to function, right? And these are the big apps. In a typical enterprise, there are 500 to 800 applications and five to 10 major applications that get 99% of the IT expenditures. And that's really where the ROI and benefit is. Scripted tools are useful if you've got an obscure custom application or something that's only being used by 10 people because then you can instrument it and, and move on. But your big ROI for your thousands of users is an SAP, Oracle, Microsoft, Salesforce, online healthcare systems, call center systems, you know, applications like that that are used by thousands of users. And you've got to support them whether their architecture is on premise or in the cloud. In terms of presentation layer, this is kind of where the rubber hits the road. You've done all this work, you've picked a product, you're expecting this data, but you need to have the data presented in a useful format for it to be actionable, right? So the alerts tell you, well, we've got a threshold here, um, check it out, we got a problem, but then how do you really figure out what you have, right? If you buy standard reports in a proprietary interface and you need anything different from that vendor, the vendor has a problem, which is scheduling. They have to stop some activity to build a special report for you. You have a problem, which is you have to pay extra for that. If you deploy in a standard BI framework and use a technology like Business Objects or MicroStrategy or Oracle BI, then you have no problem because it's in a tool set that everybody understands and it maps right into analytic frameworks that everybody can use. And analytics is where the real power is in driving through the graphics interface and having the system tell you about opportunities to drive return on investment. The, the primitive layer of, of return is to say, wow, this transaction over there is slowing down or we have, you know, we have a problem with, with this set of functionality. But the real return on investment um, is to drive from the analytics dashboard to see things about performance that you know you couldn't see any other way without all that user error data. And the return on investment for you in, in being able to use those tools can be measured in millions of dollars per year in a major enterprise account. If you look at the use cases for the entry level of user experience monitoring, all these vendors claiming all these capabilities, most of which are just giving you a scripted tool to measure a transaction or two. That's not so bad, right? That technology solves useful problems. You can set up threshold alerts. So even if you've got a robot or a synthesized transaction at 2 a.m., if that thing does slow down and you get an alert, well, so much the better because you're going to solve the problem before the bulk of your users get to it. So it, those are really useful to get a sense of problem sets before they hit your help desk hard. Transaction monitoring, you can instrument two or three transactions that are core to your enterprise and get a sense of how they're performing, especially when you do change management, right? You want to see what's the degradation, is the new release set up right? Um, you have problems and they also help with forensic analysis and, and help you get the things you need. But they're very basic measurement tools, just like all the application performance monitoring tools. They tell you about the state of networks and processors and these basic tools tell you mostly about transaction performance, not about the user. When you get to, to advanced use cases, you get to compelling value that can be delivered in terms of return on investment. If you have an advanced technology set for user experience management, you can hit use cases to solve problems that have been unsolvable. Roughly, you see four big solution sets, help desk and functional support, application support, training and education and line of business. For help desk and functional support, there's a huge use case to reduce the mean time to uh, uh, repair for the diagnosis and resolution of problems. Everything about user error and system error is there. And if someone calls your help desk, there's no more interrogation. You know what you need to know to, to take it right to functional support if required to get the problem resolved. You've also got a dashboard to all errors. You know, yesterday when you called your CIO and said, how many problems in your enterprise? The CIO said, well, in our remedy system or our HP system or my CA system or my SAP system, I see 1,400 reported incidents today. But the new state of the art is today, I've got 12,000 errors in my system, of which 1,200 are reported. 
and the rest have been diagnosed by user experience management and clustered to these 12 transactions and these three geographies. And I can even see the time that my users are spent fighting with them. And I can even roll a dollar value in because it is a BI dashboard. And I can see because I didn't solve those today, they cost us $180,000 globally across my 180,000 users. And now you start to see the power of user experience monitoring and where you can go. There's another use case, uh, another solution set called application support, where for change management, it's just extremely compelling, right? The notion that before you roll out a new release, you can see in the user acceptance testing, every user error, it's, it's unambiguous. You can see what's happening. And when you roll it out, you can immediately see the impact that's felt across the organization. Uh, real time, near time, you're seeing these errors unfold and it, they don't have to be reported. You're there. User error and system error and, and so much more. Application rationalization, you can get a sense of what's being used, what isn't, and whether you need to support it. And these are all very IT-centric and advanced use cases um, for application support, but very important. Service level agreements. Service level agreements today without this technology are bogus. The best service level agreement is from the user desktop. That's why they're always in contention, because the users perceive that what you're telling them they're getting and what they actually are receiving are two different things. And you know what? They're right. For training and education now, you can target training because you know the business processes which are being hampered by poor performance. You know that these new custom transactions have not been well explained. People are stuck with them. And, and, and you have to target training more effectively. You can optimize training delivery because you can see what kind of training vehicle worked best and produced the best results. And you can measure the effectiveness of training over time. If you get a close look at some of our other videos, these use cases can be worth hundreds of thousands of millions, two millions of dollars to your organization's bottom line. And finally, line of business is very interested in application adoption. You've paid a lot of money for your Oracle suite or your SAP suite or your Microsoft software. And what you want to see when you roll out something new is that the organization is using it. You want to understand adoption every minute, every hour, and you want to know what the barriers are because it's return on investment, productivity, and success for your company if they use these core applications, and you can see it all. So these four solution sets and the roughly 10 use cases can, can net millions of dollars per year in operational benefit to a large account. And this is where the excitement is in user experience management. We are solving a lot of problems because we have a view to this data that we could never solve. We can see all of the errors before they're reported, system and user. We can truly measure service level agreements correctly. We can impact change management so that rollouts are not disruptive. We can determine what application functionality is really not being used and what performance issues are real. And, and most of these problems are on autopilot today. You pay for them every month because you just don't know if there's a better way. And now user experience monitoring gives you a better way. And the, and the industry analysts have been keen to see this and to recognize the value. NOAA is a leader in this segment. And uh, our products today are sold around the world. Uh, our products are sold by SAP globally as SAP UEM application by NOAA. So you can buy our products direct from SAP if you're an SAP customer. We also sell NOAA EPM for Oracle and have many other products coming down the chute for you. So speak to us if you see a mutual opportunity. To learn more, uh, visit NOAA.com and you'll find out why um, we're the most viewed vendor on the internet for user experience management. Uh, we are just, you know, being bombarded for our video set and praised for it. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of free downloads and additional access materials you can reach. You can register for materials or get to other free content. So, so find out uh, uh, why we're so successful uh, and, and view more of our videos. So thank you for attending the Industry Analyst Perspective on Overview of End User Experience Monitoring. I have sat patiently and read uh, several dozen reports to build this consensus view, and I think it's very accurate, and I uh, hope it serves you well in your quest to find a good user experience uh, monitoring solution for your organization. Thank you, and have a great day.